Ladies and gentlemen, this is the start of a new and somewhat special series of small books, and it obviously starts with the first volume. How could it be any other way? I will first say something about the first volume and its author, and then more about the series. Frozen Time, museumed as panic rooms, already tells the reader nicely what to expect. And if one then takes into account the author, Valentin Kröpner, full professor of history at Lucerne, it all becomes clear. You will be served a marvelously worded intellectual provocation. Museums and their exhibitions and their reviews are omnipresent nowadays. This ubiquity, though, serves to transport secret messages which Valentin Kröbner does not want to let stay hidden, because according to the author, and I think also according to my own observations, they are quite problematic. The volume combines the text in both English and German in one book. This is one of the concerns of this new series. But how does one adequately combine the two language versions, English and German, into one book. One could print one language only on the left-hand pages and the other only on the right-hand pages, but that would lead to a steady jumping about. A destruction of any textual flow and of the experience of reading this one author's voice in two versions. The same holds true even more if one would switch between languages after every finished paragraph. The cover title poses a similar problem. German first, English first, large font, small font. What kind of confusion is that supposed to be right at first sight? The idea here was to solve this problem by making it a turnaround book. I've only known this concept from newer children's books. We have implemented it very concisely here. It is two books in one volume. With a complete turnaround, one accomplished the transformation. You can literally turn it whichever way you want. You will get the same argument, but with a different cultural tone each time. With this bilinguality, we want to relate the sometimes almost hermetically separated linguistic words of intellectual German and English to each other, without expanding one word at the cost of the other. I'm very grateful to De Kreuter Oldenburg, the publisher with whom I've been privileged to work with quite some time now, for co-developing and producing this new series. And they just started uh, their marketing efforts. This cannot be taken for granted. They took an entrepreneurial risk here. The volume comes with great features at a comparatively low retail price. I hope that it will pay off for them, for the publisher, in terms of revenue. The new series is called Vienna Public History Lectures. It is based on annual autumnal lectures in Vienna, which are available for playback via Deutschlandfunk Kultur, the German national broadcaster. They are held in cooperation with the Faculty of Historical and Cultural Studies at the University of Vienna. This, this and all further volumes will be about the public, more precisely the non-academic dealings with references to the past, with references to stories and to identities. These talks and volumes aim at both the academic community and an interesting public. They are also a bridge building and another translation project in that regard. This autumn 23, Patrick Berners, a leading feuilleton journalist from the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, will visit us as the second speaker with a talk about Hilary Mantel's historical novels. 
In 2024, Ursula Krechel from Berlin will follow, and in 2025, Anne Weber from Paris. Two very famous German and French speaking writers. It is an exclusive roster so far, and I'm already looking forward for every, to every single talk and volume in the next years. These volumes will stay recognizable. They have the potentials to be collectibles. And at last, I want to thank everyone involved from the bottom of my heart.